Well, right now I've got this new way to make my colloidal silver in the first step towards making um, silver hydroperoxide with MSM for the purposes of the bath. <clears throat> See, what I used to do was I did my production in big plastic containers because that's what the guy who sold me this machine, this uh, Silver Gen Pro 7 from SilverGen.com did. He sells you this plastic container. I use it as a storage container, but I don't do anything else with it. I have silver hydroperoxide with MSM in there because it has a spigot and it's very convenient for dispensing. So I can put it in my water pack and dilute down the water, dilute it down with warm water to irrigate my mouth. But what I do now, see, I make distilled water and it goes into a glass gallon jug and then around morning when I take my bath I start my batch for the next day I get a chair to sit down in because if I put it in a plastic container and then an aquarium pump at the bottom to circulate and I got the plastic insulation of the wire what happens is the DMS I'm making DMSO that way and it and it has like 24 hours in there to be and to combine with the plastic and create and dissolve some of the plastic and that's what was making me ill okay horse grade MSM can turn into DMSO and so you have to be careful how you use it in the past I would put it directly into the bath now, horse grade is very cheap by comparison to human grade. It's like 10 times difference in price. So I have bath-oriented MSM. But I have it stored in a plastic container. That's okay because it's dry. But to dissolve it in water, it has to go in a non-plastic container at all times and never meet up with it. Now, cloth, duct tape, that seems to be okay. Um, but my... Uh, what do you call these things? Uh... <laughs> Ah. you know snorkel but my snorkel I use for immersing my face that's plastic and so that's a mistake to use it now with the MSM in the bathtub see you know short duration I use this 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 it's okay but what I was doing in making this stuff is I had it in a plastic container and that was my mistake. And along with the aquarium pump and the um, and the insulation on the wire of the aquarium pump for like 24 hours. And so I would put the distilled water in vast quantity in there. Because this is the way, you know, I was taught how to do this. And it was very inefficient on top of everything else. So I used like six gallons or five, depending on which size container I had. I put of distilled water in there and the aquarium pump. And then I'd immerse these nice, large um, silver electrodes, nine, four nines fine, and it was the wrong way to do it. I'd make my colloidal silver and then I'd add hydrogen peroxide and then I would add horse grade MSM and the and I tried to fiddle with different sequencing of what steps to make after what but it didn't matter because I had it in a plastic container with a plastic insulation of the aquarium pump and for sitting for at least 12 hours if not 24 hours in which the horse grade MSM dissolved into water and it created DMSO so this now is my modified method. I wasn't going to tape this today, but I figured, what the hell, you know? I know now. I, I, I put two-thirds of a cup of coarse grade MSM in the bath. Well, I'm getting my head myself. So I split the MSM. I have two different types of MSM. Plus, I scaled down the quantity of colloidal of, of water, of distilled water, to two liters. This is a two-liter borosilicate flask. I have it marked with a 
a pan marker where to put the water line at so that when I immerse the electrodes they'll be within an inch or less of the epoxy block that there's, they set in when I bought them that's the way they came now the guy said half inch to three quarter but I, I don't want it I don't want it that close so about an inch so I have in there it's two liters of distilled water and I run it I ran it for 12 hours yesterday and that was too too much so I'm gonna try for 10 hours today and I fiddled with the set screws in here there are four set screws there are two next to the knob and then there's two in the center I don't know what any of them do all I know is I turn them all the way to the right clockwise with the help of a Phillips screw and quite frankly you can't fiddle with them too often because they're soft plastic those set screws and you can mess up so that you can't change them anymore I had to use pliers in one of them yesterday because I keep fiddling with them so I just turn them all the way to the right now the mach machine runs hot there's a transformer in there a transformer coil and well two coils a transformer and it runs hot like warm it, it's warm it, it doesn't hurt but it may hurt the board it may be cooking it slightly you know or overheating the coils um, I did have it open but I gave up uh, I don't like open you know open boxes you know for circuits it's you know not safe so I closed it back up I even had a fan running on it a 99 cent fan and I wore out my batteries within two days it took two it takes two double-a batteries so that was a waste so I've got my t appliance timer now set for 10 hours and see how that works because what happens is if you run this it goes in stages when you get, approach the mud uh, gray mud sta stage and since I'm converting it with with hydrogen peroxide I don't care if I go too far I have to go too far because I'm going to dilute this down into a 30 gallon tub of tap water um, so I don't get the latitude to make this in a big plastic container I have to be very careful how I do this in terms of concentration but I don't have to worry about the MSM because what I do is I make it so let's say it's 10 hours okay take the electrodes out turn the silver gen machine off but keep my other older machine from colloidal silver supply running because I'm, I'm only using the magnetic stirrer inside you can see it spinning around down there so I have this so this mix is actually better than using the larger container that came with this unit and the aquarium pump that was very bare mixing um, so I turned down the amplitude knob all the way since I'm not using it and I just fiddle with the mag magnetic stirrer so I could buy a magnetic stirrer and they cost like fifty dollars a lot less than this three hundred dollar or two hundred fifty dollar whatever it was I think it was two hundred two twenty five uh, for this unit, this was 800, of course. This is for making, f you know, several gallons at a time. This is just for making one liter at a time. So that comes with silver wire. But this unit comes with these silver plates, and there are four of them. There are two sets of electrodes. So it's really for heavy duty use for making lots of silver at one time. And they're self cleaning in the sense that you don't try to clean them. He flips polarity quite frequently on this unit, much quicker than this one does. And they're relatively self-cleaning. They're, they're pretty good. So you, all you have to do is just use them. Put them in the distilled water. Don't use anything else other than distilled water. And it works like a charm. They, they stay relatively clean. But I have the knob turned all the way to the right here. This knob, too, including the four set screws inside. Um, because that's the only way to override the mechanism that he put in this circuit for auto shutoff should you go past 15 parts per million there's no way you can he tried to prevent you from getting mud because he's dealing with people who you know don't know what they're who, who are doing something different they know what they're doing but they're creating colloidal silver and I'm not merely doing that I'm doing that as only as the first step for making s silver hydroperoxide in which I waste no silver because all of it converts into if you know if you do things right all of it converts all the silver converts into 
oxides, various oxides of silver, and so you don't waste any silver. You don't have to filter out any particles. Well, the particles, so what happens is, usually, is you get a, um, a white fog. It turns to gray. And then, those particles that are foggy, as it's, you know, stirring, it's a fog, because I, I, I don't allow them to settle. They do eventually do settle because it gets to be so much particles that they aggregate into larger sized particles, and many of them fall to the bottom, and a few keep stirring around, but they agglomerate, they aggregate, and so the water becomes clear. So if I take my special... I did buy one accessory when I bought this, and that's a laser pen light, and it is a very good LED. Look how many LEDs, how many uh, LED bulbs are in this. So what is that? That's eight. Let's see, one, two, four, six, eight, eight, eight LED bulbs. And it, it shines like crazy. It's, it's so... But then you've got this laser and so you see already you've got particles in the water because it it lights the laser lights them up that's the Tyndall effect it's called but then you can get a very bright light on this and you can see the particles with the bright light see them they're spinning around but yesterday I had this for 12 hours and there was also not only particles in the water but particles on the bottom so it looks like I'm not going to make a fog. See, I had the fog before because I had dirty electrodes because I was doing another experiment in which I ran this with hydrogen peroxide already in it. And that's why I was getting the fog. It looks like I'm not going to get a fog. I'm just going to get particles. And so it's going to be a question of how... How long do I run this for? right angle. There we go. Because how many particles am I willing to put up with? Because if you have too many, when you put in the hydrogen peroxide, there is a limit to how much you can convert. So that's why I say uh, 12 hours, I think, was too long. Because um, this is a small container. I'm trying to create the maximum amount of colloidal silver such that when I add the hydrogen peroxide, I don't have a leftover of silver particles. All those particles react on the one hand. Yet on the other hand, I want as much silver hydroperoxide as possible to go into the bath. And because I have two liters of water with which to work, it creates complications. Um, I can only make so much, but it reduces the quantity of distilled water that I use, which is a minor thing. Oh, no, actually, that's not minor. <laughs> Six gallons of distilled water is a bitch. Two, quart, two liters is not bad. Bad. Now, this is a borosilicate beaker f that you can put boiling water into, but that just was another experiment I was going to do, and I never did it. So I'm using it for this purpose, and it works out just fine. It's, it's a rectangular-shaped cylinder, and so it's a flat top, and I can sit this, and it's the right height. It's, everything worked out perfectly. And I just marked it off with a water, you know, a permanent marker, uh, four little marks around the top to mark off where how how high to fill it up so I know every time you, you know just fill it to the same level um, so I run this for 10 hours take the electrodes out shut off the circuitry but keep the magnetic stirrer running add in the hydrogen peroxide and I only have to add 30 um, cc's so let me show you the measuring device I use. It came with a vitamin supplement. I think it was silica, possibly. It's this 30 cc scoop. And it has a nice long handle to keep it away, keep the hydrogen peroxide away from my fingers because I've burned myself a few times and it's not enjoyable. So I just put in these 30 cc's, pour it in while it's stirring, and it changes color. I'll show you a little later on when I get to that point. It, it goes like dark and then it goes to and then it starts to fizz and the fizzing is like a gray fizz and it might go to white preferentially it should go to white and not be gray 
and that shows the uh, silver particles are at first they aggregate and become larger that's why it would turn to mud but then they effervesce and turn to a gray or hopefully a white suspension of particles and that's the oxidized silver particles um, and you get the effervescence too you can hear it you can see it and so then what I do is I let it sit for several hours so my process is I start this in the morning because I want it in the morning for my bath so this is for tomorrow's batch so I started it around the same time I finished my bath and I'll run it for 10 hours then I'll put the hydrogen peroxide in there after I shut off the electricity on the electrodes and take out the electrodes and let them drip dry I suspend them between two folding chairs and that's why <laughs> I'm using this bucket now for a different purpose I have paper towel at the bottom here and I put these electrodes over the top of the of the open container and let it drip dry down into the paper towel uh, before I turn it the other way and then put it on my shelving to put it away because I don't want the water the silver water to go up into the epoxy block because we don't want to short out we don't want to create a silver pathway between the electrodes to, to short out above the water line so I always try to keep it in this position before until it dries before I flip it over and I never try to put tension or pressure on these electrodes because then it, it can get bent out of shape very easily um, the epoxy block was not meant to take pressure so and the blade and the electrodes are not meant to be take pressure either you know they're not that sturdy so I try to always set it on the top side, I flip it upside down, but I don't want it to drip into the epoxy block, so I have to drip dry in this position first and then flip it over. Um, so I run the thing for 10 hours, then I add the hydrogen peroxide, 30 cc's seems to be all I needed to put in. Oh, no wait, I did 30 cc's and I waited a few hours, and then I added another 30 cc's, and it seemed to help it. So actually it takes more than 30 cc's. Um, let's see, how many of these did I put in? Was it two of these or three of these? I want to say three, and I think it was too much. But I'll do it again today, one scoop at a time. Sorry, I accidentally, <laughs> am I getting low battery? I did three of these, but it may be too much. So two to three. So 60 to 90 cc's. And then I let it sit for several hours eat between each addition of hydrogen peroxide. This is food grade 35% strength to allow every, the chemistry to evolve and to work itself over and the effervescence to come out of solution. And then I add one tablespoon of human grade MSM crystals. Okay, that's 99.9% .9 for human use of MSM crystals. Okay because I want to conserve it because it's very expensive it's ten times more money than the horse grade and so I let that dissolve and stabilize so all this can take place this evening and by tomorrow morning it'll be done then I pour it into the bathtub I start the bathtub running and filling up with bath water and I put two-thirds to four-thirds of horse grade MSM into the bath while I'm filling it and then when I get some water in here, I pour that finished mixture into the bath. And now I got my bath ready. And then I'll add some cloves, some powdered cloves. Not, not too, well, as much as I feel like. And cayenne pepper. And uh, the cayenne pepper can burn my balls, so I make sure I don't add too much. But we'll now see if I add lots of MSM sulfur. I don't have to worry about the cayenne pepper burning my balls. In fact, it's kind of pleasant. In fact, it's very sexy. <laughs> and it's very stimulating. It feels like you're in a spicy hot bath. Your whole skin feels spicy. It's a very delightful experience. But you've got to have lots of sulfur in the water in the form of MSM, along with a lot of silver in the form of uh, either colloidal silver or silver hydroperoxide, so that the stinging from the cayenne pepper is enjoyable rather than irritating, annoying, or worse, painful. And so then all this mixture of herbs and chemicals and sulfur and silver really and, and oxygenated water, you know, hydrogen peroxide, really works their magic on the physiology. 
and then soak in there for an hour or two. And so that's basically how I make this stuff. And it's quite a, um, I'll show you the hydrogen peroxide. I always keep it in the fridge because it's just like soda pop, an open uh, jug of soda pop. You have to keep, oh, the, the label is missing. You know, this, uh, I used to get this always from the same party, and now there's another party that makes it. They're in competition with each other on uh, Amazon. And they both sell it for the same price. You can buy it by the quart, by the gallon. Um, I like to buy it by the quart because it fits inside my little fridge here. But now I'm going to buy a couple gallons, or I did buy a couple gallons. I think one gallon. I restricted myself. Um, and that will that'll store in a regular size fridge in another part of the building. And then I'll transfer it to these quart size so that I can put it in this fridge down here to have for daily use. Um, so it's very straightforward proposition on how to make silver hydroperoxide with MSM for the bath and not run the risk of creating pla dissolved plastic due to the action of the horse grade MSM <clears throat> creating DMSO and interacting with the cheap plastics and creating dissolved plastics and that's why I was getting a cold condition that would not leave me. It, it just hung on to me and got worse every day because well it got tiring, tedious every day to, to deal with that. Um, although taking salt helped cleanse the physiology, but the only thing that really worked was to stop using the bathing procedure and then learn, figure out what I did wrong. And I suspected I knew what the problem was, but I wasn't sure. But it's the horse grade MSM that's not fully reacted. When they make it, they take DMSO and react it with hydrogen peroxide and they don't fully react it. So you get something other than um, MSM, mixed in with the MSM. That's why it's 97% pure MSM and 3% something else. And when you put it in water, it can form DMSO, which in the bathtub is okay, because I don't have plastic in the bathtub. But when I had it in these buckets and I, to make, you know, my mixture, that was a mistake. And I had the aquarium pump in there, and so the plastics was dissolving and creating s dissolved plastic and that's why I was getting a cold condition which is not pleasant because you've got dissolved plastic throughout the entire physiology it's kinda like women who have leaky silicone breast implants okay they get sick well this is the same thing DMSO can dissolve plastic so you have to be careful so now I, I follow a different procedure and it econo economically is much better for me because it saves me distilled water it takes the same like it takes a little less time before in those big buckets it took like 15 hours now so it's going to take me less than 12 hours something less than 12 and I'll find out how long that is you know it probably no, no less than 6 hours somewhere between 6 hours and I want to say 10 hours somewhere between 6 to 10 hours and I get to use the cheap horse grade MSM for the bath which is really good it saves me money that way because four-thirds of a cup or two-thirds of a cup of MSM, if it's human grade, is very expensive. <laughs> you'll look it up and you'll see what I mean. Uh, if you've got the money, a few hundred bucks to throw around every month, because most of that's going down the, the drain anyway, to bathe in it. But it's very important to have lots of sulfur in the bath to help you utilize the silver. And also, if you use... So, um, it helps to have lots of MSM form of sulfur in the bath to help you utilize the silver but also to take away the effect of bathing in cayenne pepper which can be very painful to the balls and I would imagine to the vaginal wall being the analog to the scrotum um, so it's a really big plus to add MSM in a large enough quantity two-thirds of a cup four-thirds of a cup you know somewhere around a cup give or take a third you know let's say uh, that's a 30 gallon uh, tub which is a children's tub it's not a full-size bathtub so if you get the idea so silver reacted with hydrogen peroxide is nice but it has this feeling of being incomplete without the MSM added to it and that can be pretty expensive if you don't use horse grade for the most part now I put the human grade one tablespoon in here <clears throat> to finish the process Okay, so that's like a bare, bare minimum, but not enough to bathe in. So then I 
so but see I keep things separate so the human grade is in here and I never put the horse grade in here even though I could because it's a glass container but it'll be um well that's true I could couldn't I yeah because the magnetic stir bar is Teflon and that's safe for DMSO as I understand it I remember Stanley Jacobs son over there at Jacobs lab uh, dot com I think it is uh, that's uh, they have a list of safe items materials that can uh, be in touch with DMSO and DMSO uh, and not worry about the outcome and I think Teflon was safe okay yeah see certain plastics are safe but I'm pretty sure that's not one of them it has to be very high grade plastic because you even st the Jacobs lab sells their DMSO in a plastic uh, container bottle. I prefer to get mine in glass, but if I get DMSO, uh, yeah, I have some in my stockpile. It's old, it's breaking down, and it has a smell to it. Um, but I prefer to get mine in glass. But at any rate, so the horse grade MSM e elicits uh, DMSO when it's uh, dissolved in water, and and it it could be the fact that it's distilled water that was the problem not tap water because my tap water is very hard it has a lot of calcium in it and so maybe the hardness of the tap water prevents DMSO from forming in the bath because when I used to take baths when I was up in Packwood Washington I used horse grade MSM and I put various salts in the in the water and I had my um, thingy here my uh, I keep forgetting my uh, snorkel and I don't I don't think I ever got cold conditions so it may be the hardness of the water with the various dissolved salts that prevents the horse grade from MSM when it dissolves into, to, into that mixture. It prevents it from the formation, uh, prevents it from forming DMSO. And it could be that I had it in, um, you know, the plastic container with distilled water, and then the horse grade MSM was able to form DMSO and interact with the cheap plastics and give me dissolved plastic in the water. That's my guess estimate. It's the kind of water that you deal with that will determine whether or not the horse grade MSM produces DMSO or not. But that's just a, it could be, I could be fallacious in arguing that case. It may form it anyway. Uh, and so it may be just be a good idea not to use that um, snorkel in the bathtub at all. Uh, I don't have a cold condition yet, so uh, uh, but then I didn't use the snorkel that much this morning, so I'm not sure about that point. But at the very least, if you want to play it safe, do not put horse grade MSM in any plastic container um, of water. Keep plastic away from horse grade MSM and, and just uh, use human grade. And so I divide things up. So I put the horse grade MSM into the bath, I put the human grade into this speaker, and now it's safe see so that's what I wanted to do in this video is teach you how to do this in the safe way the safe way to use horse grade MSM because it's the cheap economical way to do this recipe and it's very important to have MSM in the recipe you can try without the MSM but it makes such a big difference that you can feel the difference when you because silver hydroperoxide is stressful to the physiology by itself but when you add in sulfur in the form of MSM in large enough quantity it's literally blissful. It's downright blissful, especially when you get it up to four-thirds of a cup, as opposed to this morning I just used two-thirds of a cup because I was raising the level to see if I would slowly, to see if I would get a cold condition. I had one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and today was two-thirds of a cup, and now I'm definitely positive because I start, I'm starting to feel the relaxation effect of that bliss, of, of having just the right recipe and the right quantity of items but no side effect of a cold condition in my nose and that was horrible draining mucus all the time oh it was horrible but I had the cold condition throughout my entire physiology so it's important to have lots of MSM but it has to be economical and it has to be safe and that's the point of this line of experiments was I was trying to come up with a new method to make this stuff this recipe such that I could still have lots of sulfur in the form of MSM but none of the hazards and keep it economical. So that's the point of this video, and I'm going to do, I'm going to save, I'm going to add in uh, a few more episodes. This is just the beginning step of making colloidal silver, in which 
I'm going to add in a few more episodes to this video to show you the next steps. But I wanted to do all the talking now in the beginning and get it out of the way that describes uh, all the particulars, the technical details. In which, you know, I've, I'm taking this machine beyond its safe limits, so I may be cooking the circuit boards. So, and <laughs> I'm sure he's not, it's not in, under warranty anymore because I monkeyed with it. I opened it up and I monkeyed with the set screws. So if I fry it, it'll be my loss. And I'll have to buy another, buy another if he still wants to sell me. So actually what I should do is I should take a picture of all the, <clears throat> of all the circuits and take out the circuit board and take a picture of the underside in case, because I don't even know if he's going to, hey, I shouldn't be saying this, should I? 